Hi, everyone. In this video, I'm going to kind of orient you a bit to the uh, SEM builder or the graphical user interface in Stata. Um, this uh, interface is used to uh, build and to uh, be able to test structural equation models. And uh, you can utilize it to test, you know, very simple models or more complex models. I thought in this video, I would just kind of orient you to the basic interface and give you sort of a rudimentary demonstration using multiple regression, keeping in mind that most of the time when folks utilize or run multiple regression, they don't do it through a structural equation modeling um, interface. They typically just use something like least squares regression, which is part of um, pretty much most statistics packages. So at any rate, um, what we're going to be uh, testing is this model right here. Uh, this uh, is basically we're looking at uh, predicting patient satisfaction uh, level as a function of age, severity of illness, and severity of anxiety. And so we're uh, basically just going to specify this model using that SEM builder in Stata. And we'll just kind of generate some output just to kind of, again, just to kind of give you a sense of, of how to use this interface. And in other videos, I go into a lot more complex models and so forth, but we are keeping this uh, pretty simple for the current demonstration. I will mention too that underneath the video description, you'll find a link to uh, the, the uh, Stata data file that I'm using. So you can download a copy of the data to follow along. So here we are uh, opened up in Stata. And I'll go ahead and open up the uh, data set. Uh, I'm just going to go. I actually have it on my computer. It's the satisfaction file right here. So this is the raw data. And uh, again, we typically would run this analysis using just a standard least squares regression. But we're going to go ahead and use the uh, Stata uh, SEM builder to create our model So, um, or to specify our model. So I'm going to click on this tab right here for statistics. And then go down to SEM, Structural Equation Modeling, and click on this button right here for Model Building and Estimation. So I'll click on that. And what we see here is an interface that comes up. This is the SEM Builder. And here we can actually specify our model uh, very, very easily. So just to kind of orient you to this interface, just know that over on the left, there are various buttons. So you'll see there's a select icon right here. This button right here is used to um, uh, to draw in manifest or observed variables, which we're going to mainly be using in this particular demonstration. You'll see that this uh, button right here is used uh, to draw in latent variables, or you know perhaps um, if we wanted to, we could draw in error terms. Um, and so uh, we also have a button right here for. Uh, it's a single headed arrow. So that's to draw a path from one variable to another variable. And then this double headed arrow is used to draw in a covariance. So to specify our model, it's, it's quite easy. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is click on this little button right here to draw in uh, my manifest variables. So um, we'll, we'll uh, select that. And so you'll see that when I go into the space, you'll notice that uh, right now you can kind of see a uh, rectangle. So if I click in this space right here, the rectangle appears, I'll go ahead and select, um, we had three predictors in our, our model. So I'll go ahead and uh, click three times right here. And obviously, as long as that button is selected, uh, you know, anytime I keep clicking, I end up with more and more rectangles here. So I don't really want that to happen. So I need to deselect that option. So I'm going to click on this little um, this little uh, arrow up here for the select uh, arrow. And I'll go ahead and uh, click in each of these, and I'll just uh, press delete and get rid of each of these boxes, as you see right here. I will mention, too, I should have uh, actually drawn in uh, the dependent variable. So I'll click back on add observed variable, and I'll add that variable as well. And then I'll deselect. Just to kind of note, too, that you can move things around if you just kind of move, while the select icon is activated, I can select, you know, uh, the, the different uh, figures in this uh, diagram, and I can move things around very easily. So it's very uh, user friendly in terms of kind of cleaning things up. So next, I'll select the uh, add path uh, icon. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to just go ahead and draw 
uh, from one one uh, box to another box. So uh, basically, I'm just going to draw in paths from the independent variables to the dependent variable. And you'll notice too that when I draw when I drew in that first path, an error term uh, is represented now in the path diagram. So by default, that's going to occur. So next, what we'll do is go ahead and add in uh, our next couple of uh, paths right here. And then following, I'll go ahead and deselect that. So I don't, I don't want to draw any more paths. So I'm going to deselect. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in my variable names. I'm going to associate my variables with the boxes. So I'll select, while the uh, select icon is on, I'll select the first box. And I can use this little drop down right here. And I'll, I'll go ahead and select, uh, there's uh, H, another one I'll select. Uh, severity, and then we'll add in uh, this last one for anxiety right here. And then for the last box, I'll go ahead and select satisfaction. So just make sure, though, that, uh, you know, that you've already imported your data uh, or else you're not going to be able to select those uh, variables in the same way I just did. So next, we'll select the add covariance button. We'll click on that. And I'll go ahead and I, my preference particularly on the left side of the of the diagram, is to draw up. If I draw down, it, it, it'll still give me a double-headed arrow, but you'll notice that the arrow is kind of pointing in the opposite direction. And I just don't really, it's not v quite uh, visually appealing to me. So I'm going to draw up from one variable to another. So I'm going to draw up from severity. Oops, excuse me. I need to re-click that button there. Draw up from uh, severity to age and then age excuse me, anxiety to severity, and then uh, anxiety to age right there. So I'll deselect right here. And so now we have our basic model uh, laid out. So now we are pretty much ready to run our analysis. So if I click on estimation and the estimate button right here, you'll see we have three uh, methods of estimation. Uh, the maximum likelihood or uh, maximum likelihood with missing values, those are what you're probably going to use most often. And, uh, you know, basically uh, the difference between them is really how um, how missing values are treated. So if you happen to have um, if you've selected maximum likelihood, then the um, then the method of dealing with missing data is to use list wise deletion. If you select maximum likelihood with missing values then it's going to use full information, maximum likelihood. So you're not you're not going to lose. Um, really uh, many cases uh, as a result of using that particular estimation approach. But we're going to keep this pretty simple and just stick with maximum likelihood. You also see under uh, the SE robust tab, these are the different standard error types. We're going to leave it set for the default standard errors. And I'll also mention too that in terms of reporting, uh, if you click under this tab, um, in terms of the main output, uh, right now I'll get unstandardized uh, regression coefficients, but if I selected this display standardized coefficients and values, then that would give me uh, the standardized coefficients. So let's go ahead and just deselect that for right now, and we'll go ahead and run the um, the analysis. So just click on OK, and you'll notice that in my path diagram, you'll see that I've got uh, basically the uh, unstandardized regression coefficients that you see right here. Uh, we also have uh, covariances that are estimated among my my um, my independent variables. And by the way, in the context of SEM, we don't tend to use terms such as uh, independent and dependent variable. We mainly use uh, terms such as uh, endogenous and exogenous variables. So basically, an exogenous variable is a variable that um, that has no no paths drawn towards it, but there are there would be paths drawn away from it. So it's uh, basically an exogenous variable will predict other variables in a model, but it's not going to be predicted by other variables. An endogenous variable is one that uh, has arrows flowing to it, or uh, and um, it's basically predicted by other variables within the model. I will also uh, show you too that um, if you Right now, if, if you click on any um, portion of the model, you'll notice that you get some uh, details on the right. So uh, a lot of this information will be reported in the main output. I don't tend to spend a whole lot of time on that right here, but you'll notice that you get your regression coefficients and standard errors, Z values and P values and so forth. 
So now let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to uh, shrink my window there and uh, we'll just take a look at our output. So you can see in our output, you'll notice that we have uh, basically the, the SEM builder. Uh, after I specify my model, it generates the code that would run the analysis. So this is the code. Uh, for running the analysis. And I'll, I'll tell you that it's a good idea to kind of look at it um, and get used to kind of uh, thinking through the code because, you know, oftentimes in SEM, you're working with more and more complex models. And the SEM builder, while it's really nice and easy to draw things out, um, you know, things can become a little bit more unwieldy with much more complex models. So learning how to uh, write the code and so forth is not a bad thing uh, because you can save that uh, for, for later use. So as you're looking at this, I'll just say that uh, the way this is specified, you'll see we have SEM. That's the basic uh, SEM function. Then we have uh, age with an arrow pointing to satisfaction. So the arrow is just a, a hyphen followed by a greater than sign. So that's age pointing to satisfaction. We have severity pointing to satisfaction. We have anxiety pointing to satisfaction. So those are the three paths in our model. You'll notice that also we have a comma here followed by, and typically at following the comma, you'll have various options. You'll notice that it says COV for covariances. And so then you'll notice that we have severity uh, asterisk age. So that's the, the syntax for uh, specifying a covariance between severity and age. Uh, then we have um, anxiety asterisk age right here. And you'll notice it kind of wraps around the, the line right here. This is actually technically not, um, uh, would not be there if I was writing this out using code. And then we have anxiety uh, by uh, severity right there. So at any rate, we'll scroll on down. We'll take a look at our uh, table. And so in this table, uh, we have our unstandardized um, regression coefficients right here, uh, basically in this portion. And you'll notice too that this is the intercept uh, for the model. And then we've got our unstandardized coefficients, the regression slopes right here. You'll notice that we have uh, the standard errors that are provided in this column, Z values that are provided, and then P values for testing the statistical significance of those regression slopes. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going through and interpreting the uh, interpreting everything. I'll just kind of draw your attention to the basic interpretations. You see right here that all three of our regression slopes for our predictors um, are negative. So they're actually indicating that um, you know, age, severity, and anxiety are all negative predictors of satisfaction, at least according to those regression slopes. But in terms of the significance of these predictors, um, you'll notice that, that really the um, age predictor and the anxiety predictor, those two predictors would be deemed as statistically significant given that. And then the severity predictor, that p-value is greater than the standard or conventional 0 0.05. So we would not consider that predictor statistically significant. So you know, as we're thinking about this, uh, what, what the meaning is behind these results, basically what this indicates is that uh, individuals who are older uh, are reporting or predicted to have uh, lower levels of satisfaction. And then individuals uh, with greater levels of anxiety are also uh, predicted to have lower levels of, of uh, patient satisfaction. Now, if you want to obtain uh, the R-square value for uh, this analysis, uh, that's actually quite easy to do. Basically, uh, you can use a post-estimation command. We'll go over to statistics, and if you use a little uh, menu here, you've got post-estimation. We can select it, and then where it says specification, diagnostic, and goodness of fit analysis, you can click on equation, goodness of fit. And so um, now we'll click on OK and you get the R square value. And clearly, you know, you can just basically type this into the command line at the bottom and uh, you would end up with the same thing. Just to show you, I'll just type in estat, eq, gof, and we get the same results. So in terms of the R square value for our model, it's 0.6854175. Basically, uh, we would say then that the set of predictors are accounting for about 68.5% uh, of the variation in satisfaction.
Now, uh, just a, a couple of other things I want to highlight. If we go back to the main uh, output here with our uh, parameter estimates, you'll notice too that in the output, we've got uh, the means for our uh, exogenous variables, age, severity, and anxiety. So all of those have been estimated. You'll notice that we have uh, variance estimates associated with each of those as well. And then we've got the variance for uh, the residuals or basically um, in the context of you know, SEM, we typically refer to um, the uh, residuals uh, as a disturbance or you know, we, so we have a disturbance term where we have a variance estimate. So that's where we see E dot satisfaction right there. So that's the VAR that you see right there. Then down below, you can see that we have COV and then we've got for covariance uh, between age and severity, age and anxiety, and also severity and anxiety. So again, if I want to obtain those stand, the uh, standardized coefficients, I can easily do that. I'll go back into the builder here and uh, we'll go back to estimation and estimate and go under reporting and we'll click on display standardized coefficients and values and we'll click on OK. And so now you can see that um, our uh, coefficients um, for our regression slopes, uh, all of those are going to be uh, the uh, standardized uh, regression slopes. So there's our slopes for each of our predictors right there. And that's basically all there is to it. So I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on going through and interpreting every aspect of all of this. The main focus was, again, to kind of orient you to um, the uh, SEM builder in Stata and uh, developing a little bit of uh, understanding about how um, how it how it can be utilized. So certainly uh, this was a very simple model that I was working with, but um, I, I do have other videos and other presentations where I demonstrate more complex models. So that's going to wrap up this video demonstration and I appreciate you watching.